thanks for coming. My name is Willie Paul, and that's a fake name. My real name is William George Paul, but I like to shorten it. It's easier to write all the time. I come from uh, the peninsula in the Bay Area, and uh, really welcome the, the moisture in the air. That's really unusual if we're on a severe drought. And that's another matter. What I, what I have in my heart is that we need to help permaculture evolve with things that we already have. Combine those uh, forces. Because one of the basic tenets of this presentation is that permaculture can't do this alone. It's uh, evolving too slow, it's underfunded, it's fractured, it's whatever you want to call it. But that's not what the focus is. I'm trying to get you to look at the synergy between permaculture, the transition movement, mythology, and spirit nature. So what I want to do first is ask you to jot down a couple of big ideas about what permaculture is to you. Who can tell me? Who? Responsible land management. Okay, good. Anybody else? Take a crack at what permaculture is? This is supposed to be the, the positive stuff. Community so, building. Okay, community building. Anybody else? Full circle of resources. Okay. Right livelihood. Right livelihood, okay. That's a good list. If I can spell it, it'd be crazy. It's a good. Okay, now we're going to delve into something that isn't really part of the weekend, per se, but transition. Who can tell me what transition is supposed to be about? Powering down. That's right, that's right. <laughs> She's like, you're on the ground, I'm like, what's this? Like, yes. How about localization? Yeah. I'll, I'll jump in here. Um, localization. Building just, community. Cool. Building community. Okay, good. See, now we're overlapping values, which is yeah. the gig, right? Building community. Anybody else? Sustainable economics. Sustainable economics. I'll just put sustainability. One more? Sir, so do you know what transition is? Just to pick it up? I've only been exposed to like transition towns, you okay. know, and mostly up in Canada. I think we saw some stuff on Peak Mall and like that. Okay, so that's uh, kind of a, a regovernization of sorts, right? Yeah. We'll call it that, even though that really probably doesn't mean much. But it's also about localization. Okay, mythology. That's dear to me. Stories. Stories. What else about mythology is a powerful force? Passing wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Tradition. Mm -hmm. There's common symbols between cultures and people. That's cool. Also, I would, I would pose that, uh, at least in my opinion, mythology is also about projection into the future and taking a look at that, getting ahead of the curve. So we'll put future here. All right. Now, I've had a, a long-standing uh, dialogue with permaculturalists about spirit versus religion. And I've uh, persevered. I stand here today advocating spirituality, not religion. Oh, that's what I got to finally. They let me go. <laughs> so, who can who can chew on spirit nature as a force? What does that mean to you, if anything? Nature, I guess you could just kind yeah. of go there if you wanted to. A deep understanding of our connection as humans to the rest of the uh, world. This interconnectedness. Interconnectedness. Yeah. Well, as in ecology. Hi. Yeah, inner beingness and independence. sense of what uh, having a spirit for in nature, in nature, for nature, what, what is that all about? How can you verbalize that feeling? 
Connection to something much larger than uh, anything that human mind can hold. Cool. Yeah, transcending the self. Right on. Oh, I feel it. <laughs> it's like truth bumps. People will say goosebumps or truth bumps. Truth it feels bumps. like that. Like just. Nice. Okay. Yeah. You can start to see a pattern here of commonality, or maybe just of, of love and thought that you might want to try to tie these things together. That's what I'll come up to. Integration and opportunities. So let's let's talk about how mythology and permaculture intersect. What's at that intersection? Do you have a sense of that? <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to, you see, it's not really built yet, but we're going to work on it today. Yeah. So there are symbols in permaculture that I've uh, done a lot of work with. There are some stories coming more and more, right? There are the band singing songs. So that's the sort of bridging I want you to think about. It could be media, you know, it could be a website, stuff like that. Does that make sense? You don't look uh, how does media connect? Yeah. How, does, how does media connect? Okay. Oh, well, if we're going to uh, promote uh, the meeting over here this morning and the drum song, then it gets out of my website. And it's suddenly media. It's content. And, you know, content would be part of bridging these two things together. Does that sound abhorrent or does that sound possible? I mean, is that too sacred a thing to make media? I'm just not connecting it to myth, really, but okay. Oh, okay. Well, I, I agree. It's all right. Yeah. And what about um, transitioning through a spiritual nature? Do you have any sense of how that would intersect? Connecting with your heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ceremonies and uh, group work. Yeah, ritual. Ritual, yeah. Yeah, ritual is a big deal. I would say that the uh, the prayer, the drum prayer this morning, is a ritual, and that could be uh, categorized and given to other folks to practice. Yeah. That is a part of what I'm trying to say here. To build this movement, we need to have a new ritual. Um, okay. Does anybody want to add anything to this sort of schema before we go talk about solutions? Any other ideas we can put down? I think, can I try my hand at an example of what you mean by media? Sure. Um, so like this morning I've been holding a morning circle over Zoom technology with a spiritual community that meets a nonprofit community that I'm a part of. And so it's not necessarily creating like public media per se, but I'm like connecting us. Like I'm keeping the conversation going so that we're spreading it in our world. So it's kind of like human to human media almost. I don't know if that makes sense or yeah, if I'm dialogue. Yeah, like yeah. I'm keeping the dialogue going and, and the support going and building the community. Like Ooh. that's what I see yeah, about contacts. what you mean. Cool. cool. Yeah, I like that. Cool. Um, Cheers. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I have to confess, I, I'm sort of a pessimist. I think we're heading for a, a fairly large crash in this country and this world. So my opinion would be say, let's get that connectedness out there and share it as fast as we can. Exactly. Like that's in the solutions kind of. It's like right. that's right. right. So if we can put yeah. media here as a solution. Oh, we still have a lot of time. <laughs> Conversations. Yeah. yeah. Continuing to build our support. Okay. So. Let's talk about solutions. Um, my teacher, my PDC teachers were all about solutions. We would talk about problems all the time. Well, what about this? What about that? Then they would flip it and they'd go, let's talk about solutions, Willie. You know, make it positive, make it uh, tra traction, uh, get it going forward. So who has any ideas about integrating and, and getting these things out there? 
your, your idea about <clears throat> human to human is really good. It's like using our technology to actually connect us. <clears throat> like not say it's connecting us. Like Facebook mm -hmm. kind of says it connects us, but like. Yeah. We have a group but in our town, a sustainability group that actually did connect through Facebook. So, you know, that, I mean. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. It's yeah. simple, except for bogged down in the, you know, yeah. mission statement stuff. Um, but, I mean, you know, <laughs> well, there's, well, how, there's how, hope. Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> new in the area. And um, one of the things I did to, like, and I'd never used it in the past to meet people that had similar values and interests. It was like meetup.com where you like form groups mm -hmm. and yeah. like people mm -hmm. who are like, you yeah. know, they're either new in an area or they're getting interested in something that their friends and family aren't really into. And it's like, well, yeah. how do I connect with people who share these same interests? Yeah. You can create a group on there. Mm -hmm. Meetup yeah. is great. Have you ever been on Meetup? Have you seen me yet? Yeah. Two yeah. years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're, like, you're like, this is such an old idea. I'm not even reacting to it. Of course. You know? Are you taking yeah. it for granted? <laughs> for, me, for me, like, uh, the thing that's appealing is to just take it away from uh, like a one dimensional idea. And, and I like the idea of pulling in music, pulling in community, mm. pulling in yoga, where you've got like just one member of the family or whatever that's interested versus the whole community and really pulling in to where everybody's getting something out of these sort of things. One of, one of the things I'd like to suggest we talk about is uh, tradition, because I'm really interested in making new tradition, which to many is, is, is a word concept, because they have their traditions or they just don't care, so it's a tough one. Okay. But why don't we create a new tradition out of this, uh, this gathering this weekend? What do you need to have a tradition? You need some people. Yeah, you need some people. Um, you need some common collective action. Yeah, right. commonalities. Commonalities. Yeah. To people, actions, values. Repetition. I mean, it needs to be taught and then carried forth. Right. right. So that's important to carry over. Yeah. I like the idea that they're talking about where the elders were meeting with the young people because yeah. we need to learn from somewhere and I, I feel like where I've learned a lot of stories and rituals were from from older people. Agreed, like multi-generational uh, transition. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's, that's brilliant. Allowing it to evolve also. You're like allowing us to learn and keep growing together and the young people to bring what they've got and the old people and like I think what you're speaking to is, to me, feels like evolving tradition. Yeah. Um, not, not too rigid. set, not too yeah. rigid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And being in that flow of like finding what's good, holding on to it, and letting go what no longer serves us and continuing. Well, something that's really like alive it. for me is um, the, I mean, the value of diversity and having um, safe and um, inclusive um subgroups i mean yes. we're not all the same we don't all have the same values we're just. very you know we're, it, it, there's a bit of homogeneity mm -hmm. around here mm -hmm. so yeah, um true. healthy uh, resolution I, to be able to do that yeah and and just raising awareness of the value of 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 differences yeah. um and that you know whatever particular thing that in the the realm of all these these um concepts mm -hmm can be manifested in really different ways depending on what the community is and what the what the country is and what the cultural background is and um, you know there's no we're not, we're not pushing to a, a, a monolithic unity yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't uh, serve us but and, and there's a real tendency to to you know think that you know whatever we're into is what everybody else is going to be into and it's not but there's one answer yeah yeah so which is valuing valuing the killing us diversity yeah, yeah that's a big deal and just valuing it, yeah, let's just do it, instead of typically raising awareness yeah, of it. Yeah, and I, I like, you know, acknowledging power dynamics that are in the middle of that, and, you know, it's, we, we it's... Being open to being confronted, too, absolutely. like, just, to, like, we all screw up, you know, and, like, being able to be yeah. called in yeah. to that exactly. instead of defensive, and... Yeah, yeah. <sighs> just some light work. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. All right, well... Uh, let's explore my uh, possible solution to Ooh. this integration. This is what this is about. Okay. And um, I'll introduce it by saying a community of practice is typically a professional business sort of group. 
it doesn't really exist to make money. It's, a, it's about being together and talking and sharing, having coffee and having an event maybe once in a while. So that's really what community practice is to me. It's not about making money with these days. It's about uh, acknowledging the boundaries and then starting to board them down, eliminate them. So, does anybody else have a sense of a community practice? Have you heard of that phrase before? I haven't been bored, and to me it sounds kind of rigid, so it gets me a little nervous when I hear that, that it's kind of structured. And <laughs> yes, it's not structured. I'm an engineer, so it's like, okay, <laughs> this is what we do, this is what we, you know, this is like, you know. So, do you have any thoughts on that? Or you just think? Yes, it's a transitionary tool. Mm -hmm. It's not where I would stop, mm -hmm. but it's something I would propose to get us to the next level. It's not a platform. So the meetings will stop at some point, and there will be action. There'll be more gathering. <laughs> I don't know. Where, I don't know where it would go. Uh, I'm just thinking, uh, jump, jumping off the cliff. And here it is. Uh, it's like a chamber of commerce, as you can read on this outline. It's a gathering. It's uh, it's got a director and stuff like that. Um, Mission statement and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, this organization is also online. It's it's more online than off, but it could be both. Are you open to us like evolving it with you in this conversation? Like, yes. can we be part of the brainstorming process? Because I yeah. feel like it's a great yeah. starting point, and I think what you're saying is important to think about. Like, do we need how much structure is really needed to have it be? And what does it gain? What do you What are you thinking would be valuable about that structure? And mm -hmm. is it initially because people can understand it and it's solid and it's clear? Is that kind of yeah. Thing? Initially, it's it's not acknowledging <laughs> this this four score sort of union. Mm -hmm bringing in some folks from these four areas and then drilling down on it. That's really kind of what I see. It may be too rigid for this group, mm -hmm. but the majority of yes. people will yes. feel very comfortable in that kind of a structure. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Sustainability group, yeah. that's kind of the big thing, is everyone's really looking at the economic sustainability mostly and really pointing towards business and Stuck in, stuck in capitalism mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, stuck in the real structure, so it's, yeah, maybe transitional that way. Good. Charlotte, what do you think of the COP idea as a transitional organization? Yeah, it, it hasn't um, permeated through me yet, so I'll uh, come up with something when I'm... <laughs> Thank you. I, I guess I don't really understand what it would look and feel like. I've never been in a business uh, community of practice. I'm part of an intentional community. That's a community of practice. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in NBC practice groups. That's a community of practice. Mm -hmm. uh, to, it's Good. like I mean, there's so many ways that those examples. things are all integrated in my life, but I realize that's not the, tr not the case for a lot of people, mm -hmm. and it's not the case, and you can see examples of it everywhere where, not where it is siloed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Practices, you know, there's lots of different ways to come at um, getting people to integrate previously siloed. To be honest, the biggest biggest thing about this for me is that it's, it's uh, a nonprofit. It's not existing to make money. It's taking us out of that realm, out of that churn. That's you know, that's I give, give up after that. You, you've given me other examples of the COP, and they're all valid. Yeah. So don't get stuck on the COP. Get stuck on how, how it works and who joins and what the values are. Have you heard of B corporations? Mm -hmm. I wonder if it would be a successful B corporation too, because then I feel to me nonprofits have this thing of like we can't make money, and I don't think we need to. to me, mm -hmm. I feel like money can be a tool. We can allow it to be an exchange thing, or we can transition it into whatever we want. Um, and like the nonprofit. Some people call industrial complex can be something that is is exhausting for people because they work their stuff for the bone and don't get paid enough. And I, I think that that's it's like self sacrifice to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And I think we can do better. And I think we have done better already um, with things that like are mutually promoting. Like when I hear you say business group, I totally see how can we help each other do what we love and make the world better and be better ourselves for it. Right. Um, and that's beautiful. Um, and I am like, uh, I, your vision is really lovely, and I'm excited that you have it. <laughs> that's all yours. I'm here to give it away. Um, 
Well, well, guys, I really would suggest that you keep in touch with me. Uh, I, I may actually put something like this together. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm, I'm really happy that you come and, and shared your ideas. And, uh, you know, have some fun. Go, go onward. See what else you can find here at the Convergence. Could you tell a story of, uh, mm -hmm. like, weave a story of what the formation of one of these communities of practice as you would love it to manifest so that mm -hmm. we can tap into a mythology and get some spirit coming through your your vision because you've been working on this and i'm, I'm, I'm I, you, you have a story and i i will remember a story rather than a brainstorm okay well there's a place in oakland called lake merritt and it's highly polluted, it's a sort of storm water runoff collection bay, uh, so it's, it's a pretty sad place. But if you would put together some storytellers and some localization folks and some technology from permaculture, bring those together, you can address that pollution in Lake Merritt. You can start to heal not only Lake Merritt, but yourself and, and this little group of people. And you can also create media share your stories, start, start sort of getting out the word. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a quick one.